Welcome back into the Lions 24-7 podcast. And this week is the NFL Scouting Combine out in Indianapolis. There's going to be eight players on that list out of Penn State looking to impress pro scouts, coaches, executives, what have you. Jesse Lucchetta is among them, played defensive end and linebacker here at Penn State for four years. We're going to get him on in just a moment. Sean, it's just a huge week for these guys. Uh, you can go up several rounds. You can go down several rounds. We're talking about hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars in the balance, depending on your situation. Jesse's an interesting case, but I, this is go for lunchtime for these guys, and they're going to be tested on how they've han handled these last couple months. Yeah, very nice of him to take 20, 25 minutes for for us um, because it's a it's a huge week. I mean, this is a big time job interview for them. Uh, he's going to have the opportunity to answer the questions that they have about his strength line, uh, excuse me, straight line street speed, athleticism, things like that. As he evolves as a hybrid prospect in a league that started to embrace hybrid prospect, there's certainly value in there. There's value in his special teams background. There's value in his linebacker background. Of course, we loved loved watching him as an edge rusher this year. His development and his um, you know the leap that he made when they just asked him to, to go get the quarterback was was phenomenal enjoyed watching him always enjoyed dealing with him and of course he's been one of those guys that's always been at the forefront of the program over the last couple of years we're going to keep this episode simple you're going to hear from jesse uh, later this week winter workouts will wrap up so we'll have some final thoughts on what happened at the earliest phase of this uh off season we'll look ahead at spring ball next week is spring break here on the university it's also going to be spring break here on the show we're going to take next week off but we got another episode coming this week we got Jesse Lucchetta coming right now, and he was kind enough to join us from Dallas. We're happy to welcome Jesse Lucchetta onto the show. Obviously, Jesse preparing for the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, where he's off to this week. We really appreciate you taking some time because this is a huge week for you, Jesse. Good to see you. The first time we've gotten uh, you face-to-face -face since down in Tampa after the Outback Bowl. So we hope all has been well since then. All has been well. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're down in Dallas. You're training. You've been there for a couple months. Uh, former teammate Ellis Brooks down there with you. Um, what has the process been like for you getting ready to, to try to go for launch in Indianapolis? Uh, it's been a great process, honestly. Like now, you know, everything's so detail oriented. You know, I'm focusing on my nutrition, um, eating clean, uh, you know, training hard, uh, but also finding that balance where, you know, I'm not doing too much. Uh, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life feel lean, feel fast. Um, just excited to get out there in Indy, have another opportunity to make another statement. Jesse, you made a statement at the Senior Bowl all week long, and then at the end, of, during the game, you were fantastic. I mean, what was that experience like? How much do you think that really um, put you on the right track and uh, heading into the scouting combine? Uh, honestly, it just goes back to being at Penn State. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves on being the most competitive environment in college football. So, uh, you know, once I got out to mobile, um, you know, I, I knew I had to raise the bar a little bit. Uh, you know, throughout the entire week, I felt, you know, I kept getting better and better. I kept making more splash plays. And then I felt ultimately, you know, Saturday, um, I, I knew I had to cap off a strong week and, you know, have a dominant performance. And I felt like I had a, I had a great game. In terms of position work down there in Mobile, Jesse, you know, the conversation for you coming out of Penn State was, where does Jesse Lucchetta fit in within an NFL defense? What do the mm. coaches at the next levels think about him? Um, determining where you're going to line up, where you're going to participate down in Mobile, and then this week in Indianapolis. How are those tricky kind of conversations to have? Um, honestly, no. Um, it doesn't matter where you line me up. Um, I've shown I can be productive at the um, either or position. Uh, for me, my mindset is, you know, the goal is to be disruptive uh, and be the most disruptive defender on the field wherever you line me up. Um, as far as a mobile, the biggest question was, you know, can he play the defensive end position um, at a high level against the best of the best? Um, I felt as if I, I checked that box. Uh, so heading to, to Indianapolis, now I'm looking forward to, you know, putting my, my, athletic, my athletic ability on full display, um, make one more statement before draft day. So just taking it one day at a time. Was it more fun last season doing what you did, uh, you know, just going from the full time linebacker to the, the, the hybrid guy that could come off the edge? Was, did you have it looked like you were having I, it always looks like you're having fun, let's be honest, but it looked like you were having more fun. Was that something that really just, you know, kind of elevated your play because you were a little bit more comfortable there? Absolutely. Um, you know, you know, at first, you know, your, your first couple of years, you're a little um, boxed in and you're a little afraid to make a few mistakes. But I felt like this year I, I played so much more free. Um, you know, I was definitely having more fun, um, but it was just something about um, just to, having the ability to, to be to be interchangeable, going from the defensive end position back to the linebacker. 
Um, I felt like a lot of the plays that I made just came so naturally because of one, my film study, how I prepared, and two, um, I was literally just out there having fun. Um, it didn't matter where I was lined up. The goal was to be the most disruptive, um, and I felt that I, I had a good show in this past season. Where, where did that come from, or who did who did that come from? I mean, was it? I mean, is, is there any conversation you can think back to last off season? You maybe felt a little bit of that weight come off. Um, yeah, I just say entering entering uh, my senior year, um, having having good conversation with Coach Pry, um, just as who I wanted to be, the type of player I wanted to be, the type of leader and type of team I wanted to be. Um, you know, entering my senior year, um, and from there it's just. You know, I worked at it day in, day out throughout the off season, and obviously leading up to the season, um, as I was preparing to make that transition. Uh, you know, meeting with you know Dion Barnes, um, because a big kudos goes to him because I wouldn't have had the year I had um, if it wasn't for the work and the meeting time that we spent together. Jesse, you did step up and start a couple of games at linebacker, uh, one of which up against Ball State uh, after Ellis Brooks had been ejected against Wisconsin. And then, of course, the final game of your Penn State career, you're, yeah. you're, at, you're at the mic position leading the defense. What was that experience like after spending an entire fall, essentially, at defensive end in this new role, getting back to your roots, playing linebacker one final time? Um, honestly, I just felt like it was, it was a Cinderella story, you know, just everything coming full circle. Um, but nonetheless, um, it, it, didn't, it didn't feel any different for me. Um, it was another opportunity to, to complete the task at hand. Uh, you know, I felt as if we had a good showing um, when, we, when we were in Tampa. I just felt as if we had some, some more reinforcements. We could have won that game. Definitely could have won that game. Jesse, it's kind of outside the box, but thinking back a couple of years, you played as a true freshman almost exclusively on special teams. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that experience? What did you pick up from from maybe some or maybe something that you didn't realize at the time that ended up adding value to your career at a later point? Um, I learned a lot. Um, I said the biggest thing I did I did take from that experience was uh, humility, um, and you know everyone everyone has a role to play. Um, when I first got there as a true freshman, you know, we had some guys, uh, you know, from Shaka Tony to Gross Matos to Odafe, Micah, uh, Cam Brown. Um, and although, yeah, I was physically prepared to contribute, it was just we have so many individuals. Where, where, where were they game planning to, to have me line up? Um, but during those first two years, being able to go on to go play on special teams, kick off, kick off return, pump, pump return, uh, those are highlights for me, being able to run down and, and knock somebody's heads off. Like that's that's what I look forward to, um, but at the same time, it humbled me. It allowed me to to become a player who wanted to invest and elevate his football IQ um, off the field. Learn from guys like Jan Johnson, you know how they watch film, how they prepared, and it ultimately turned me into the football player I am today. Um, and I'm extremely grateful for it. Jesse, you also developed into a team captain, a, a vocal leader for this squad. We, we saw you do that kind of stuff for the 2018 recruiting class, and there were a lot of personalities in that class, and, and you helped keep things together. Um, how did you kind of cross that bridge going from a recruiting class leader to eventually a locker room leader? And do you kind of have to take a step back for a couple years because you go from uh, the 18-year-old in a class with a bunch of 18-year-olds to an 18-year-old in a locker room with 22, 23-year-old guys? All right. I was just kind of, it was mainly, honestly, you just waiting your turn. Um, once I got to Penn State, I kind of studied the vets. I studied the guys who did things the right way. Um, you know, guys who, you know, watch film, um, you know, sacrifice with good teammates, um, were in early, out late. Um, and I kind of just, you know, took bits and pieces that I felt would, would be, uh, you know, beneficial for, for my progression and added them to, to how I go about my business. Um, you know, and I waited my turn, you know, the first two years and then, um, obviously, my opportunity came for me to become you know, a vocal leader, um, a leader in the locker room. Um, you know, I felt and I wanted to make sure I went about it the right way. Combining the last two answers here, what, so, what sort of advice do you have for the guys younger in the roster, especially in the portal era, which you kind of, you know, you're sitting there watching it take place as during your career. What, yeah. what, what has it been like to see the portal era? And what would you say to those guys that have maybe uh, towed that line, gone past that comeback, whatever? Um, what, what's it been like to watch that over the last couple of years? Um, so I'd say the biggest advice I could give for, you know, guys who are going through you know, the portal um, route is, you know, although, you know, you may feel as if transferring is the best option for you because obviously sometimes, you know, people just need a fresh start, um, a new opportunity, um, come ready to work. 
Um, you know, nothing's going to be guaranteed in college football. And I know a lot of individuals go through the process, you know, when transferring is, you know, they're not going to transfer unless, you know, everything's guaranteed. Well, nothing in life is guaranteed. You just got to have, you know, a good head on your shoulders, um, stay diligent and just be ready to work um, and ultimately be a, be an even better teammate. Um, and I'd say that's, that's the best advice I could give to the guys going through that route. Jesse, as you get ready to, to board your flight and head up to Indy, what do you know are spots of your game, spots of your skill set that are being scrutinized, that are in that microscope right now? And, and what have you done to try to prove that you're ready to make that next step to professional football? Um, just throw my training here. Um, I already know the, the biggest question is they want to see, uh, you know, my straight line speed, um, agility, um, you know, and all these drills. So just going to Indy um, and just honestly put them, having a great performance. Um, that's that's my mindset right now. Um, just taking every single drill, taking it one at a time, and just doing my absolute best uh, to dominate. What's that transition like? Oops, sorry, to Tyler, go ahead. I was gonna, I'm just going to mention another aspect of the combine that isn't on television is all the behind closed doors meetings, interviews, conversations. Yeah. You seem like someone who's pretty well suited to handle yourself. Not all guys, even the best athletes in the draft, are ready for those kind of encounters. Have you had a few of those conversations already? And, and kind of what's your early takeaways from getting grilled, I guess, by NFL scouts? Yeah, so we had a uh, we had uh, some some extensive nights in uh, mobile. We had like four hour long meetings with teams. They kind of call it like speed date, and you sit down on the table for like sixteen minutes with a team, and then you go on to the next team. Uh, so we did that for four hours. Um, but I had good meetings, honestly. You know, just you know, talking ball, talking about my story, um, just being me. Uh, so this really is nothing to it, honestly, for me personally. What, what's a conversation like that? Like, I mean, are they trying to trap you? I know we've we've heard stories about awkward questions and things like that. Are they trying to, to make you uncomfortable? Are they trying to get you to be vulnerable and, and, and things of that nature? I mean, what's um, absolutely, that, what's that absolutely. You know, all the stories are true. But um, for me personally, um, I'm, I'm an authentic individual. Um, what you see is what you get. Uh, so I'm always shooting straight. I'm always keeping it honest. So, um, you know, I own I own the things in you know, my journey that, you know, weren't necessarily, I say, the best of things. But... You know, just kind of being diligent and, and having a humble approach um, for the mistakes that I had in the past. Um, talking ball, um, letting them know who I am as a player, my character. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's really about it. Jesse, we know you've got a lot of confidence at defensive end, at linebacker now. You're talking to 32 different teams. You could land anywhere in the league. But what do you feel is the right fit for you in an NFL defense right now? Um. Honestly, I feel as if I present a, a great, a great amount of versatility um, going to the next level. Um, you know, with the right defensive coordinator, I could be used as a as a chess piece. Uh, but for me personally, I feel as if I'm going to have my most success uh, playing that outside linebacker, defensive end position, um, being close to the ball. Um, but at the same time, schematically, um, if need be, I could I could fall back into inside um, and still get the job done, no problem. Um, that's just how I view myself moving forward. Um, and playing my best football. You're down in Dallas training with uh, former teammate Ellis Brooks, uh, of course, Brandon Smith in the draft as well, uh, Arnold Abikiti. Uh What are you seeing from your, from your former brothers at Penn State um, and, and what, what's their draft prospect? Or, uh, what, do you, what do you see from them from, from your vantage point about their draft prospects, their combine uh, prospects and yeah. things like that? Um, you know, they're all unique players in their own, in their own way. Um, you know, they're all going to test well. Um, you know, all are going to be, you know, great picks for, for whoever gets them, um, you know, being able to work with Ellis, you know, throughout the past uh, eight weeks here has been great. Uh, just having someone here, uh, you know, we've been pushing each other. Um, you know, I feel like he's in the best shape of his life, uh, looking real lean. Um, but he's a guy that, you know, how any any defensive coordinator is going to love because it's just how intelligent, how, how high of an IQ player he is. Um, you know, he makes a lot of plays on the field that he shouldn't, he shouldn't, but just because of how he understands the game and, you know, how he understands situational football. Um, he puts himself in the best position to make these type of plays. Um, a guy like Arnold, you know, I was able to see him in uh, mobile <clears throat> a few weeks ago. So, you know, Arnold's um, Arnold's Arnold. You know, he, he's making the same moves, um, you know, being impressive, winning his reps with the one-on-ones. Um, so um, I'm not worried about him. He's going to he's gonna be a, a high draft pick. And Brandon, uh, I'm looking forward to wherever Brandon goes. You know, he's a guy who's going to be um, – a great athletic specimen when as far as when he tests, he's going to run fast, going to jump to the roof. Uh, I'm looking forward to continue to see him develop. 
with all that said, there are some holes to fill back here at Penn State on the mm -hmm. roster for 2022. And um, starting with a, a couple of the older guys that you got to know very well, Nick Tarburton came in with you, Jonathan Sutherland out of the same area and came in before you. Uh, they're both looking to step up. We may see Sutherland in a full-time starting role linebacker here this year. Um, what do you think about each of those players as they, you know, in year number five and year number six, respectively? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm really excited, uh, especially for a guy like Sutherland. Um, you know, he, I feel he's going to be able to play his best football. Um, you know, he's a guy, sure tackler, loves to hit. Um, and I feel as if they're going to use him schematically the same way they use me. They put me in that area where they felt I'd be the most successful. Um, and I feel that that's, that's the exact same thing they're going to do for Sutherland. Uh, put him in a, in a better position for him to be the most dominant um, and the most productive. Um, I'm also looking forward to a guy like Curtis Jacobs, um, a guy who, you know, I, I told him, you know, he's going to have to lead now. Um, you know, a guy who he's prepared, you know, to, to contribute physically. Um, he's going he's gonna to be productive. Um, but now he has to take that next step that, that you know, in regards to leadership uh, of being that dude. Uh, people are going to rely on him to make big time plays and, and big time situ situations. Um, and that's one thing I know he's going to be ready for. Um, another guy who I'm really going to be looking forward to, uh, you know, a guy like Smith Wilbert. You know, I feel like he's just scratching this. He's just scratching the surface of, of how dominant he could be. Um, and he showed that in the Outback Bowl. Um, you know, but I told him, you know, he has to be consistent. He just can't have a great show in one week and then, you know, just be, be average. You know, I always tell all the guys, you know, you can't fear being uncommon. Um, be different. Um, so that's that's kind of been my message that I've been trying to reiterate with him um, the past the past few weeks uh, since I've been gone. Just you know being able to watch how they're progressing, you know, through winter workouts and whatnot. How about a couple of younger box linebackers and Kobe King and Tyler Elsden, guys that might step up to that starting role at Mike here coming up in 2022? What did you see from them? We've seen bits and pieces. You've gotten the full scope since they got to campus. Um, I said I like Tyler Elsden. Um, he's a natural leader. Um, he's going to be someone who, you know, when he has a success that I know he's going to have, I won't be surprised uh, just because how he carries himself, how, how he prepares. Uh, you know, he's a guy who's a great note taker, um, always asking questions in the film room. Um, and, you know, he's also going to make Kobe King even better for it. Um, those are guys, you know, they're going to push each other. Um, they're going to compete. Um, and ultimately, because I know both of them, they're, they're both hungry to get on the football field. Um, so, you know, the cream's always going to rise at the top and they're going to make each other better for it. Um, but I'm also looking forward to, to watch how Kobe develops um, you know, from a leadership standpoint and how he, you know, begins to kind of find himself, find his role and start to just play fast um, and get out of his head. Because uh, like I said earlier, you know, those, those first couple of years as, as, a, as a younger guy, you're, you're kind of you're playing a little closed off, a little more timid um, because, you know, one, you don't want to make them you don't want to make the wrong mistake. And two, uh, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to hear an earful. So. Um, just let him make sure those guys could, you know, just let loose, play ball, play fast. Um, you know, when, once they start doing that, I'm sure they're going to be, they're going to be fine. You saw a bunch of younger guys on the edge as well, Zariah Fisher, Davon Townley, those guys. What, what are the younger guys at defensive end bringing to the table? Is they have to replace quite a bit from you guys uh, for, with with you and AK heading out the door? Um, I say they're going to bring a, a a new a new flame, a new edge. Um, a guy like Zerai, he reminds me of myself um, from, you know, from a phys phys from a physicality standpoint, stature. Um, he's a guy that I know, you know, he's going to be ready to play. Uh, he's, he's been waiting for his opportunity. Um, and I told him his opportunity is now, but he's the only one that can, that, that can make it happen. Um, so seeing him, I'm going to be looking forward to, you know, seeing how he progresses in the spring ball um, and ultimately, you know, through camp leading up to the next year. Um, he's a guy that I know that's going to be able to contribute um, and a guy that I know that's hungry. Jesse, um, obviously a lot of eyes on you in Happy Valley, but even more uh, up in Ottawa. Uh, what has the process been like, you know, being a face for that area and, and also seeing what has happened at Penn State? I know you weren't the first Canadian guy to come down here, and, and Jonathan Sutherland's still on the roster, but uh, Christian Veyu and, and Theo Johnson and these guys that you helped recruit to campus, how much pride do you take in where you come from and where you've come, come from uh, since, since leaving home? Um, I say the utmost. Um, it's everything for me, you know. Um, you know, for those who who know me, they know me. I try to pride myself as you know being the son of the village, and you know being from Canada, being from South Ottawa, um, and having all these other Canadian guys here. It just shows that you know the kids back home like nothing, nothing's too far unattainable. Uh, I remember there was a point in time where you know Canadian football players playing playing NCAA football at the Division One level was kind of 
it was kind of unheard of, but now it's like, it's, it's becoming a, a reoccurring theme. Um, it's everywhere. Um, we're, we're blessed at Penn State to have five, five of them. Um, and Theo, Christian, um, Malik, myself, and, uh, um, and Freddie. But it just, it just goes to show like, you know, it's a pipeline that's, that's been waiting to develop. And I'm, I'm always tell Coach Frank and I always laugh at him. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of untapped, untapped talent in the city, in the country even. So um, just being able to be one of those schools that, that's more so at the forefront, showing up, showing all these kids that, listen, if you really want to play you know, Division One football at the highest level, um, it's very possible. Can, can you detail your journey? I mean, we, I, you, Tyler and I, we all go way back. Um, you know, you played at Mercyhurst and, and kind of got on the scene there. What was it like to make that decision to come to America? You know, some guys, you know, Theo played his whole career in Canada. Christian came down and played uh, in America. What, what was that decision like for, what were you, 14 at the time, 14, 15 at the time? And, and how did that, that journey play out for you once you made that decision? Um, it was a decision I knew I had to make very early on. Uh, just because, you know, understanding the dynamics of, of football in Canada, um, it's not the same. Um, for me personally, I knew my goal was to, you know, play football at the highest level, at the highest collegiate level. Um, and I knew to achieve that ultimate goal, I'd have to come to the United States and attend a prep school um, to get, a, to get a, a, a fair playing field um, when coaches evaluate the film. Um, so, you know, I, I knew from the time that I was 13, about 14, I started sending out emails basically um, to every prep school um, in, in America, from New York, ranging all the way to Virginia, to California, uh, basically, you know, introducing myself, letting them know my aspirations of playing football at the highest level, and ultimately uh, letting them know my financial situation. Um, you know, being the youngest of, of eight children to a single mother, it wasn't easy. So uh, my mom, my mother, she couldn't afford to, to send me to no school and pay 30, 40 K um, for me to live on my dream. So um, in those emails, I also would express my, and I ex expressed my financial situation. Um, I ended up getting in contact with my, my coach in Erie, Pennsylvania, Jeff Root, um, who, someone who I'm forever indebted to because I wouldn't be in the position I'm in if it wasn't for him giving me the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, but, you know, once I did get the opportunity, for me, it was gold. Um, I took it and I never looked back. Uh, I mean, I took full advantage of my opportunity. Jesse, it was fun following your journey to Penn State, and obviously we got a chance to see you for four years here. The last year here, start of 5-0, and oh, finish with seven wins. That's not up to the standard that you want, anyone wants. I want to leave you with this. What's the most important thing for this program right now to move forward, take a step forward, uh, get back to competing for Big Ten championships? Because I, I know seven and six is not what you had in mind, what anyone had in mind. Um, I said the one word that comes to mind is just um, grit. Um, it, it, that's the very simple. Um, you know, we have all the pieces, you know, from a, from 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 the weapons on the offense and the defense. Um, it's just grit. Um, you know, they're good though. those guys are going to have to understand that they're going to have to want it more than than everybody else, literally. Um, you know, time is going to get tough. There's going to be some games where, you know, it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be some games where um, it's not going to start off the way we want. But, you know, playing, going back to our, our you know, our, our foundation, playing complimentary football, um, winning the turnover goal, minimizing explosives and just keeping that grit and that chip on your shoulder. Um, that's going to be the, the, the one thing that I feel like the young guys really have to um, grasp. Jesse, well, I'm, I'm going to really send you out on a higher it. note. Oh, sorry. One more quick question. <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah. Who's going to win the combine out of all the Penn State guys? Who's going to win the combine out of all of us? Win the combine. Yeah. Who, who should we most that's be a most tough one. excited to see? That's, that's, that's a tough one. Um, right now, I'd say it's between myself, Brisker, um, Jahan, Brandon. I say it's between <laughs> us four. I feel bad for you. I thought he was going to name seven guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Jesse, we look forward to uh, hopefully you all produce some fireworks out in Indy. Uh, but best of luck to you, and we look forward to seeing where you land in April. Thank you very much. Good stuff from Jesse and just a huge week for him ahead. Thanks to, to him for giving us some time. Did not have to do that, um, but great catching up with number 40. Sean, um, we wish all these guys well. We're going to have more insight and information as they go out there. They run. Uh, they go through drills. It's all underway in Indianapolis uh, starting on Tuesday all the way through the weekend. I don't think Jesse's checking in there on Wednesday. So good chance to keep tabs on the future Nittany Lions will, or future NFL players from the Nittany Lions. Uh, anything else to add here before we wrap things up? 
Not a ton, man. Jesse was great, as always. Um, a lot of insight, not only on the the guys that he played with, or not only his future, but the guys that he played with and some of the up-and-comers. So definitely check uh, check that out in case you've fast-forwarded over the interview for some reason. Um, but no, it's always always great to catch up with Jesse, and we certainly wish him the best of luck in Indy. Yeah, if you fast-forward past the interview, well, you just went from the start to the finish. That was today's episode. We're back later this week uh, with more insight on the uh, scouting combine and certainly on winter workouts as the Penn State offseason reaches its next phase, spring ball coming up in March. That's a wrap on February. That's a wrap on this episode. Thanks to Sean, Jesse Lucetta, and producer Lance Glenn. I'm Tyler Donahue. Thanks for tuning in to the Lions 24-7 podcast.